Traders back at it again with the double headphones because Jordan loves to see it. I hope you guys are doing well. Super excited to be here for you. Super excited to be here with you. I'm Aaron, your host with the Moses and the incredible man to my left and my right, depending upon the orientation of your screen, is the, the man with the plan, the most relevant Rose, David Roses, uh, the, snock, the stock sniper, the deliberate, diligent detective, uh the, the the man with the plan david how you doing today man uh feeling fantastic uh you know uh talking about uh, tr uh being prepared yesterday um you know i was feeling like it was going to be kind of a bearish uh feel it just leading into that number we got yesterday i was just kind of feeling like we're not getting the data we've been talking about that on stream over and over how we're not really seeing it yet the markets are kind of holding up uh you know and the market you know, it sold off and then it just held, just kind of chopped around the lows all day. So yep. it didn't feel, uh, you know, as volatile as I would like it, right? It wasn't right in my Goldilocks zone of uh, volatility here lately. I've been a Tesla trader. Um, I saw Tesla just kind of holding up a little bit better. You know, honestly, I traded it to the long side. And if you look at Tesla's chart, you're like, how did you trade that to the long side? There's no way you made any money. I was green on Tesla, <laughs> even though uh, Tesla did not break through. I was looking at Tesla in and around, breaking through 174, holding above one above 174.50. Uh, it never did that. It wicked it twice. I participated in that um, and then got back in at about 172. Saw, you know, looking for the dip buy in and around that price. It really didn't rally off of there. I, you know, I covered quickly as I usually do. Um, and I was just like, okay, it, it was green and I was tired. So I said, I'm done trading for the day. Um, you know, so, uh, it wasn't necessarily my favorite market to trade because I think that, that, you know, the move came in and I just, uh, I didn't feel like fishing around for anything, you know, and sometimes, you know, in these markets, it's better off to you just like, yeah, I'm a little tired today. So I'm just going to go ahead and back off a little bit, but no, um, excited, excited, excited. Uh, you know, we are getting into uh, earning season. So catalyst galore uh, for, for stocks in terms of a little bit of volatility. Um, we are seeing some pockets of strength, however, even uh, in these markets. And then we did get another data print today um, that provided a little bit of relief uh, in terms of where we're seeing the current price action drive to. Absolutely. Absolutely. You, you know, the speaking of data, we've got a lot of it. Uh, between today and yesterday, we got yesterday we got uh, CPI along with the, the FOMC meeting minutes, and it's it's been telling us a little bit of a story. When you look at the news that we got today, it kind of supports the news that we saw yesterday. CPI was a miss. Great, that's exactly what the Federal Reserve wants to hear, right? CPI coming in higher than regular. I'm being facetious, guys. Uh, the, the 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 FOMC they were not. No one was happy about that. Uh, the meeting minutes, the notes from the past meeting that we had showed a lot of distaste for how little inflation was slowing down. At the same time, at the same time, there was still several mention of the uh, possibility of cuts in the future. There was a lot of that kind of talk in the FOMC meeting minutes, although with these data points, I'd be surprised at this point if they were very aggressive. Uh, CPI yesterday was a miss. PPI today was a miss year over year month over month we're looking good but initial jobless claims coming in at 211 211,000 versus 216 forecasted it's not bad it's not great it's not horrible but these these are not things that the fed wants to see in order for us to move forward the standard ppi numbers were also misses fomc member williams is speaking right now and ecb is coming out with the press conference we are riddled riddled with different news that is that has been coming out and that has been moving we have several fomc speakers today we don't just have one or two we have william speaking we do have colin speaking and speaking uh, we got the balance sheet later today we don't 
care too much about these things per se, but they're going to give us a really good look at what the Federal Reserve is thinking. All of these people are incredibly important pieces of the puzzle that are, that are trying to put something together, put together a decent plan to make this happen. And by this, I mean interest rates. So this is great for the dollar. This isn't necessarily great for the indices, for the individual stocks. What are you seeing over there, David? Were you trading the dollar? Oh, well uh depending order on no i did not i did not trade the the actual number um you know I, and, <laughs> and it la i'm laughing at myself because i was in an eu short on the stream yesterday and if i had just like I, it wasn't a great setup so i you know i was trailing it out we were really range bound while i was on the london stream as per use um but you know uh i had to laugh because i look at the chart afterwards and that thing uh, eu just sold off so hard uh on that number um as well as quite a quite a lot of things because you saw you did see the uh um you you, you kind of saw just an inverse correlation there but the the thing that i was trying to pay attention to was the cme watch tool right and we look at the cme watch tool and prior to that number all right the day before we were sitting at about a 60 some odd percent chance um of a rate cut in june and that was basically cut in more than half. And we were at like about a 22% chance of a cut after that number. This morning, uh, we were at a 20.3% chance of a rate cut in June, right? So you say, okay, less, much less likely now that we're going to get a rate cut. But what did the market do off that number? Where are we sitting? And where could we go? We have a lot, a lot, a lot of room to yesterday's resistance, right? We sold off so heavy off of that number. So I'm like, it's really hard for me to sit there and say, there's, there's no reason I'm looking for shorts down here unless the number came in today and all of the numbers continued the same trend and we would break through those lows, but we didn't do that. We rallied off that number. So I'm saying, okay, well, where could some strength be uh, in these markets? Um, I'm going to pull up let me see if I, I, I screenshotted this from yesterday. This is yesterday, right after when I could get in. So I was trying to get into the CME watch tool yesterday and the website was just frozen, frozen. I think everybody that participates in these markets was trying to do the same thing and see. So again, this was right after the number, 22.9% chance. We're sitting at a 20% chance, but as bearish as I feel, the the where we're sitting at where we sold off the two and then kind of where we're holding i can't help but to think okay there's a bit of a bit of a retracement because the range is so wide so that's what i'm going to be looking at uh today um in terms of what could we see uh in price action off the open now will we close green i don't know but off that 830 number we were we were red we did a red to green move on both the nasdaq the es took a little bit longer uh, but everything else, uh, everything else though, TLT, IWM, like, you know, so you look at your small caps, your mid caps, everything rallied off that number and went into the green zone. We'll see if we get a bit of a continuation once liquidity comes into this market this morning, but that's what I was noticing off the 830 number this morning. No, and, 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 and we're, we're in quite the situation, right? I mean, this, it, it's, it's, it's a little odd, like, like you said before. Um, we're, we're seeing, obviously we saw movement, right? But the thing that is odd to me is we saw movement right back into levels that we've been talking about for weeks now. When you look at the daily chart, we, we did get we did get quite the aggressive push down, right? This is the 10th. We got a beautiful push down, but this is this is par for the course. We've seen this happen multiple times. This isn't just true of the NASDAQ. This is also true of the S&P 500. This candle more or less matches this candle that we got from the previous week. And we didn't get nearly as crazy the news that we were talking about. Michael, I still have the shirt. It, it is a little chilly in my house. I'm sorry. Uh, I, I like I like it a, at least a little chilly. You know, the weather's been a little crazy out here. And the markets have been doing the same. It's hot and cold, hot and cold. It's 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 not it's not fun. It's not what we want to see in these markets. Because looking at this, looking at this chart daily, obviously I would be bullish off of this level, off of the 18,000. We're already seeing bulls come in, right? 
where we get down to this level, it gets bought up. It, I mean, this has happened time and time again. A, B, C. This level is something that the market has held beautifully. The monthly chart shows you the exact same picture. Incredible strength. My only concern is this, this is now a fundamental change in my mind. I, I don't know if the market's going to agree with me, but the fact that we've got news that has been continually this off, the fact that the FOMC, uh, the Fed, the Fed chart that the CME actually uses as the watch tool that everyone uses as the watch tool, the fact that that's dropped so aggressively in June for the possibility of us seeing some rate cuts, that doesn't feel good to me for any of the companies that make up these indices. But that doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what I feel like. It doesn't matter what my fundamental analysis is. That's 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 exactly right. The market does not care about our feelings, right? Really? The market's telling you that it wants to support the eighteen thousand dollar level, regardless of the news catalyst, right? Eighteen thousand. We're going to buy ahead of that, and we're going to hold to that. Now, could we see some compression and continued movement to the downside? Uh, maybe. But what sure. news did we get? Right. What news did we get? OK, we got uh, numbers that would indicate that we're probably going to kick the rate can't uh, rate uh, rate cuts down the road. But we are coming in the earnings season. Right. And the market is is looking at these earnings and saying, OK, could we possibly see, you know, continued growth in the things that have carried us thus far? You're seeing stocks like, uh, you know, like Meta, like uh, even Nvidia, right, even in the midst of this pullback, Nvidia is still really strong. AMD is still really strong. So you got chip stocks all across the board, TSM, you name it, Micron even, um, pushing up to the upside. Uh, you know, so they, they've they continued to kind of hold up near these levels, even though they felt like they pulled back aggressively. They're not tanking, right? They're not reversing mm -hmm. these moves. They're still in a very, very, very much uh, of an uptrend, you know, when you look at the daily and the weekly charts. And, you know, in, in terms of like, when you like, when, when do you like to buy? Well, you like to buy off of dips into the support levels, and then you could buy off a of consolidation. Why? Because that becomes a new support level. So all of the, while all these things are consolidating on a wider time frame, you know, even though it feels like they're pulling back so aggressively, because Nvidia will put in a thirty dollar move, and you'll be like, oh my god, the world is ending. But Nvidia was a three hundred dollar stock not that long ago, and now we're talking about being it being an eight hundred and fifty dollar stock, an eight hundred and seventy dollar stock, a nine hundred dollar stock. So you know everything has to be placed in relative perspective. And our job as traders is not to impose our will on the market. Our job as traders is to say, what is the market doing with this price action? Is there a setup for me to participate in these markets? Um, because we're not market makers; we're just traders. We're just traders. And speaking to what you were talking about earlier a little bit, when you're looking at the news, the earnings, like you said, we have some big names copping in here. We have a lot of financials, right? Yeah. Um, today, we don't have anything too crazy that I'm seeing. Yeah, I, I like today's earnings, I was just kind of like, yeah, there's a few companies out there, but none that I care about personally. Nah, if there is nah. something that, that somebody cares about. You could bring it to our attention. We'll take a look at it, but I just, I'm not feeling it. Tomorrow morning, yeah, uh, the, the banks. So many banks, man. J.P. Morgan, Wells Fargo, BlackRock, Citigroup. First four, we know and we know well. We're getting a lot of bank data. First Republic. So now bank. we're 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 going to get into the banks, right? We start getting yeah. into uh, in, so now in during this cycle of earnings, let's see let's see what we get off of this. See if companies continue to meet expectations that have been placed on them by their shareholders, by by analysts, uh, kind of moving forward. Um, you know, if the earnings are are, I think. You know, everything's kind of like a moving goalpost. But my hypothesis is, on this is if if companies meet earnings, if they just meet the earnings, I think that stocks will continue to run because that's going to be good enough uh, given the uh, given the data that we received. That's going to be positive, uh, seen as a positive. Um, I, I think that uh, for a lot of these companies, you know. Uh, the, the bar is going to be slightly lowered uh, early on as we get closer to June. If the economic numbers, then you can start seeing a bit more nervousness. But I, I think in terms of, you know, people think, OK, well, we got we got room till June uh, to, to sort this stuff out so we could be in a 
in a somewhat consolidated market, right? Now, uh, you know, if it's consolidated, then you're, you know, selling rips, buying dips, right? Um, you know, I don't know that we trend too much higher from here until we get different data points, but we're also not going to fall off the face of the earth because we haven't received news that would precipitate that. We're just waiting on to see what the Fed says and get something a little bit more definitively uh, from people that uh, are in charge of determining where rates are going to go. And again, for these large cap companies, Meta, Apple, Google, um, you know, they're not borrowing much. They don't need to borrow much. They have a lot of cash on hand. They turn over revenue. So they, they don't, they're not facing the same headwinds as some of these other companies that have to go through and borrow on a consistent basis at these higher interest rates. That's who, it, if we, if we stay up here and, and maintain this, we have to see what those companies are going to do, but you know, good for dollar strength and good for everything else. Um, but you know, it, it's just a wait and see uh, on these markets for sure. It truly really is. And wait and see, we will. Speaking of wait and see, looking at some levels for me today on uh, on things, it, it, there's definitely a waiting game that I'm trying to play here because this area here is nonsensical. I mean, this is this is consolidation that stems back from Friday of last week into Tuesday, right? This was an area where we had a lot of pressure previously, and I was very, very nervous um, coming into trading some of these levels because I, I hate this kind of consolidation, and I have a tendency to get chopped up in this kind of action. So getting into this 18.260, I'm going to be interested to see if we get a nice close on the 30-minute above it or if we reject it and continue to this downside pressure. Uh, in terms of overall levels that I'm interested in, this is a couple days of price action just here. No, forgive me, it isn't. It's just, wow, it's just a really thick day. My goodness. I traded a little bit yesterday, but I had no idea that it was quite this small and quite this thick. Uh, yeah. we're, we're, this is this is a lot. So uh, in terms of price action I'm interested in, obviously I'm interested in the Value area high, sitting at right at 18,200 roughly. That's well, pretty close to the 18,208 that we saw from Tuesday. Obviously, we're quite above that right now. We're sitting above. We're sitting right at the 260s. I'd be very curious to see how this is handled because this is value area low from Friday of this past week. If we bust through it, I'm interested in 18.310, and I'm interested to, to these for these levels to both sides. What does that mean? That means I'm looking for the market to hold or lose these numbers. These are going to be lines in the sand that the market has to continually break through or break off of in order for it to continue in a given trend. If we make it to the, if we we already are at the 260s. If we stay in the 260s and we show some considerable strength and we go ahead and we hold this level, pop higher, I'd be interested in a retracement. If we pop up to the 310 and fart, start to find some sellers, those sellers get quite aggressive, I am happy to sell this thing. What I am waiting for is acceptance. What I'm waiting for is this market to decide, okay, we're good with this direction. We're going to continue moving in it. We're good with that direction. We're going to continue moving in it, so on and so forth. Uh, that's really the only chart that I'm going to be paying close attention to. Things like oil. Um, this is a euro trade that I took earlier today. That was a loser. You gotta, you gotta love the euro. But um, in terms of crude oil, the crude oil market is already open. We've talked about this for you guys for a long time. This thing is bullish, bullish, bullish. I'm looking to buy this thing. Any opportunity I get. Important levels are right where we're at now, around the 8550s, the 8560s. This is a line in the sand that we have come to repeatedly and have bounced off of. Whether or not I'll actually be able to get it, who knows? But the 8560 area is another area that I find is, it's going to be incredibly important for this thing to move to the upside. Uh, we'll, we'll see if it actually happens. Um, Oil is a cruel, cruel mistress. The S&P 500, very similar story. We're into lows. We're finding some strength in a way that the NASDAQ simply could not. 
We did get a little bit lower than the NASDAQ from a technical perspective. We're starting to find some buyers, but I'm waiting for this thing to break through this consolidation level of the 5244s or so. We get through that level on the 5244s. That's going to be all the way up here. Taking those 44s, taking those 50s, we'll be very interested in this thing to the upside as well. But I'll primarily be looking at the NASDAQ. NASDAQ. The NASDAQ is my bread and butter. And that's what I try to focus on on days like today where I'm nervous about the fundamentals of these markets. Dave, what are you interested in looking at today, my friend? All right. So a few things here. Um, so first things first, I am interested in Meta. Uh, Meta strong yesterday, right? Sold off. Here's the 830 candle on the 15 minute. Actually, you know what? I'll just blow it up like this so you guys can see it a little better. All right. So here's the uh, here's the uh, 830 number. Sold off, right? Creates a double bottom in and around this 506 level, 507 level, and it gets literally bought back up. Look at this opening candle. 506, opening 15-minute candle, 506, 505 area all the way up and closes near 516 and then holds and maintains a bid all day, right? Uh, closing up at about 520. We are clear of those prices today. So to, uh, Meta showing some strength. I'm going to see uh, this, uh, see if we get back, tag this level, uh, see if I can't get a dip into 522 to see if we can't participate in some more upside action. I I, I find it hard to believe that Tesla is going to be the one that sells off looking at all this strength, you know, and it's cleared the price action from the day prior, right? So in terms of what I'm interested in to the long side, this is this is one that I'm very, very interested in. I typically go in with lighter size, lighter size because of the way the spreads are on 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 Meta. It does some funky things. So you could see like nine, 10, 20 cent spreads, something like that. So typically going with lighter size. But I like the idea of a Meta long looking at the price action in Tesla. I say I've been trading Tesla like a madman here lately. I look at this and I say, OK, here is where we sold off from yesterday. We we have not nearly regained as much uh, as much of the price action in Tesla as we have other things. So I'm looking at this 174 ish level. If we tag this level here, there's probably a good retracement short. If it clears that level, we have room to 177, 178, which is going to be key resistance just based off. That's where that's where it sold off from on the number yesterday. So we've got a quite a bit of range to play with on this. If we uh, if we hold. Uh, in and around 172. Uh, there could be a long into the 173 level, but I would rather clear if we clear the 173 level, bounce off the 173 level, sell into the 174 level, and then see what that does in and around that price act, uh, in and around that price. Then we could see if we continue to support that and we go mm -hmm. scraping up towards I'd, if, if Tesla's going to be strong, it doesn't look as strong right now relative to Meta. But if it's going to have strength, I it does have room based off of this this chart here that we could get up towards this 177, 177, 50 area and then sell off from there. So uh, some levels on that for sure. I'm looking at a chart. You know, we talk we've been talking how strong oil is. I'm looking at a chart like Oxy, Oxy really holding up really, really well uh, early on this morning. You know, you got you got basically a double top in and around the six mid 69s uh, area, but 70. Why do I have $70 marked off? And it's not just because it's a psychological level. It's because on the daily chart, it shows up as a little bit of resistance. Right. So I think that there's going to be a lot of a, a lot of interest in around the $70 mark. If we break through that, we could see a really aggressive move, a more a more aggressive move in a stock like Oxy. But I could see us selling off of that as well. So Oxy in and around $70 is definitely interesting to me. Apple's been in play the past couple of days. Apple looks a lot like Tesla. What do I mean by that? We're already turning away from the level that I have marked off here in and around the 169 level. I was looking to see if we could breach the 169 level and then sell off of that. We're already doing that early on this morning. Apple does just it appears it's it's been weaker than 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 the rest of the Mag 7. Um, so the rally's not going to come into this first, in my opinion. The rally's going to go into things that have carried us here. Apple has not carried us up to this point. Now you do have kind of like a quadruple top in and around the once the mid 168s, 168 
uh, 50 area. If we don't hold up here, then, you know, if we retrace all the way back down to 168, uh, if we're consolidative, if we're chopping around in these markets, then this is probably a good area to buy, selling into what was yesterday's resistance, kind of range trading this back and forth. But I had this area marked. And if we cleared this 169 area, then I was looking at the 170 area. Again, we go back to where did we sell off from yesterday off that 830 number? That's where we sold off from. Apple doesn't have an individual catalyst that should carry it beyond this. Um, so therefore, um, barring another catalyst, I didn't see Apple, I, I, Apple 170 shorts um, seem to be uh, the right place to short. But again, uh, folks are a little bit more aggressive here in the pre-market this morning. We're, we're selling off. Uh, we turned away from the 169 to the penny uh, and we're down to 168.33. So, you know, interesting levels on that for sure. And then I just pulled up Reddit. Um, I'm not interested in trading it per se, but what I am interested in is like, if the market sells off, are we going to play around with these meme stocks today? A lot of times you'll see where the market's selling off and then people, uh, ooh, uh, meta dipping in. So we must be getting some imbalances. That's basically what's happened. Yeah, the NASDAQ imbalances come out at 925. Uh, we're two minutes from the market open. So that's probably why things are, things are selling off quite a little bit. But I'm looking at these meme stocks and saying, okay, if 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 the if people if the players are not necessarily actively trading the big names, are they going to come into the into these meme stocks, into these IPOs, and see if uh, uh, you know see if some price action comes into it? I just pulled up Reddit. Uh, Reddit uh, again, uh, definitive downtrend. Um, there's nothing good for Reddit in here until it has its own individual catalyst. So these this seems more likely to be a short, but I just want to see if volume comes into it. Jeez, man. I know this. I mean, we're, we're looking at a lot of interest and stuff, guys. I did end up entering into a long in the uh, in crude oil, just a really quick long. I believe that there was some sauce to get this thing up to the $86 level. I could be wrong. Um, I could be wrong, but we're starting to find a little bit of strength here. If this thing closes with some aggressive sell side pressure. I will end up closing it, but I did just want to show you guys that because I, I was talking a little bit about crude earlier today. Now, speaking of someone who knows how commodities move, speaking of someone who understands the wider market as a whole, speaking of a man who so marvelously graces us with his presence, the Italian stallion, the marvelous Marcello. How are you, sir? Hey, guys. Thank you for always like the beautiful introduction, man. You always like, you know, you touch my heart. <laughs> I make me feel like the president of the United States all the time. Oh, whatever, whatever, man, whatever. I shouldn't be, I shouldn't be nowadays, but it's fine. It's okay. Ah, you wouldn't do, you wouldn't do like that. I don't think you, I don't think you do, man. Right? They will, they will still make fun of my accent. I know, right? <laughs> we, we make fun of everyone's accent. Man. We're equally racist here in the United States. I know. Um, I know. I, I'm, you know, living in Texas, I'm quite aware. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy oh uh, yeah I, i'm i'm sure i'm sure oh, great, especially man. when all the streets here have like german last name yeah. you guys were friends in world war ii we were quite friends we were, we were dear friends <laughs> um you were so talking we were about so the crude yeah, I, I have a little log here. I might end up cutting it. I don't know how strong yeah. it feels. Did right you follow now. my previous uh, strategies from a couple of weeks ago? Oh yeah, man. I've been watching a lot of your crude stuff. <laughs> That's why I've been doing more long, long-term stuff. I really haven't done much on stream because all of my positions have been a much longer. That's why the red has been your color for a couple of weeks. Right. <laughs> I, yeah, when it comes to scalps, I haven't been scalping crude well at all. My, my focus has really been trying to recognize the the longer term overall move because I think you're 100% right. We talked a little bit about demand and such recently and, and just how much demand is playing a role here. We're coming into summer. There's a lot of seasonality playing a role for this issue too. So I'm very interested in trying to take advantage of that and take this thing to the upside over several days. If I would have bought it a couple of weeks ago, like we were talking about, I would be in the money quite a bit. A little frustrated that I didn't, but it is it is what it is. What are you going to do? 
and they're like you know we always like forget that you know the, the crude well you you do not because you know very well but crude is very related for, to the euro dollar cross as well yep. so it's you know infiated by the 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 fluctuation as well yeah, if you yeah. want to like pull up my the yeah the the chart i i was drawing that looks like my daughter's draw but it's fine and yeah like like we you know we, we talked about like this accumulation phase is being broken upside and then i think on the um yeah top part of the channel line that i previous draw as well it seems like has there's like a little resistance and yeah we might see 95 coming pretty much soon by i would say next month probably and that could be like our first you know pretty big uh first resistance and talking about the, the euro, euro dollar cross as well you know still like i don't know if you remember what i said uh, you know since i started like doing this uh, you know show even if i look like a clown show mostly <laughs> but um i always said that we might see 105 coming soon as well and definitely after yesterday you know we'll see like quite even sooner or you know with a, a bigger chance so i was and for me it's the best because i'm gonna back to italy soon so i will beneficiate of <laughs> this beautiful level here i will right. spend my money with like more you know emphasis so yeah that's what i you know i wanted to start with and then i wanted to know tesla bro is i don't know if you guys have talked for sure you guys have talked and we have, yeah. we have and definitely yeah. that that level right it came yeah. straight like you know it was kind of like announced right you just did like that little minimum and then bum was, yeah it, it went down to there off that reuters news drop about the low cost uh ev stuff and then it's, yeah. it's rallied off from that point obviously um you know when i talked about tesla on an intraday basis uh trading up near 174 at the moment looking at, at as, as far as the four stocks that i'm looking at actively right now looking like it's the strongest it does have mm. to that and look at the divergence as well like it's pretty long and strong yeah I'm definitely like a buy i will definitely like put like a take profit around like this level like 225 220 probably even even a little bit more like even 230 and you know it's it's going on like it's it's like fluctuating we need this band so this channel it might keep going but i think on the you know on few weeks it's gonna go here still like we we still have to wait about like the election right we still don't know do you guys have any idea like who's gonna be your next president yet you guys know it, no right? i think, I think it's, closer, it's gonna it's just gonna it's just gonna it's like a 50 50 uh shot one way or the other like oh, right how, nice. how, how how the range has been tightening between between the two uh based off the betting odds and usually the gamblers seem to get things right versus the uh versus pollsters um so you know that'll be that'll be interesting uh kind of uh coming up into it but yeah we're talking about tesla um you know uh and i'm 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 looking at this chart here uh i am I'm one again. Wait, let's let's wait and see. You know, this is kind of resistance up here. This is where it was resisted from yesterday. So if shorts kind of piled in uh, up again up on this level, right? You know, I, I'm down to a five minute chart, looking to see if we we continue to retrace off of that, uh, or if we're gonna break through that, or if we're gonna retrace off of that. Looks like at, at the at as it stands right now, we're turning away from the 174 level, trading in the mid 173s. Let's see, you know, the first few minutes of the market, uh, you know, say say the first five, 10 minutes, see if, if a range establishes or if we're gonna get a push off of that. Uh, the other thing I was looking at again, I missed I missed the, uh, my, my initial long thesis, I didn't like how it was kind of uh, falling off of the imbalances, but where did we turn on Meta? Meta supporting yesterday's close. Yesterday's close in around that 519, 520 level, 
You see buyers come in there. We're trading up into the 522 level. Let's see if it if, if it breaks out of the uh, uh, the pre market highs. And this is you know if your trade uh, you know I like to trade the closing level. Uh, I feel like those are important places to participate. And I just happen to miss this one. If for some reason we hold this level, we trade up to here. This is a three dollar range, so you could sit there buy yesterday's close, trade it into the pre market high. That's almost you know that's that's about a little over $2 in range there that you could participate in. So that's not necessarily, you know, a bad range to play. And then, you know, you're in at a favorable price. So anything that it does up here, if you've pieced out on the way up, then, then you're comfortable, you know, you're comfortable in the position. You can move the rest to break even, uh, you know, because a green to red move uh, on a stock is usually a pretty, uh, pretty bearish sign. Um, you know, if you if you you know trade down uh, below yesterday's close, maintain below yesterday's close, then you know uh, then you'll 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 get people kind of like peeling out of that thing. But uh, nope, that's kind of what I'm looking at so far on the intraday. Apple not doing much of anything. We were looking at Apple earlier and saying, okay, uh, resistance up here at 169. You know, I, I had it drawn up in in the, in the teens level. We reached up to uh, 169 to the penny. I don't like to take trades uh, in the pre-market, but that was a pretty substantial level. So it did react off a level that I had looked at before and said, OK, if sellers are going to come in, they'll probably step in here first. If they if they quit that, then this 170 level, just because that's where we sold off from. But, you know, we're, we're far below that. So uh, let's look and see, you know, if this 167 level holds, if we can get down here. I'd be interested actually in buys an Apple because this is the closing price. If you like to buy the buy yesterday's close, now you could trade that up into the pre-market highs, and you've got about you know a dollar range uh, thereabouts on something like an Apple to kind of go. If uh, for those of you in the chat, uh, what are you guys looking at? And I know I saw some forex traders in there, um, you know. But if you're looking at stocks, if you want us to talk about anything. Uh, by all means, uh, let us know. Uh, we'll be glad to look at that, uh, look at charts with you guys. There's a lot to pay attention to. These markets are, you, you want to talk about some volatility. We're seeing some real volatility in these markets early days. Um, I've been trying to get involved. I ended up fat fingering into a short, although I was, I was into a long, although I was trying to be short early days. And uh, now this market is this market has moved against me with some serious aggression in the Nasdaq. Uh, so I'm, I'm trying to be patient, trying not to do anything too crazy. I was trying to get involved up here. The market moved super quick, fat fingered into a long. Thought I was short. Had to cut that super early. Just tried to get this log here off of this level. Completely wrong. I'm gonna so I'm gonna be pushing the brakes a little bit and waiting and waiting for a second. Aaron should be an expert on that. I really am not. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I tell you what, like that sucks sometimes, right? Like I've, uh, I've uh, misexecuted before where I'll sit there and be like, oh, I'm going to go short here. Right. And then I go long or, or I'm in a position and I say, Hey, I want to start working my way out of the position. And instead of working my way out of the position, I add the position, and then I'm like, Oh my God, what did I do? Like why it's did I do that? Well. Well, I, I, I kind of catch like um, I I closed like my um, China position as well because you know I thought really? it would have breaking like all the way. Well, if you can show the the, the chart, yeah, it was like you know I thought it would have break this point, but I guess I'll try to recatch it on this one because even on the weekly chart, I see that that level could be like a you know, hopefully a longer support like 11, 11, 600, 11, 550, which is the same here that, you know, this, this part, yeah, 11, 550. I'll try to catch it. And so I can get like a better entry. I, I, I close it like I was tight. So, you know, no, you know, nothing too much red. And I'll try to re-enter here and really like try to keep it as much as I can because, like I say, if you if you see like very long term, man, like those level, you know, that's 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 a big divergence. And you know, we always talk about the curve with David. You know, it's 
it's doing like this and it's it's swinging right it's making the swing and i think that level there i you know it's gonna be like a better solution for me even because talking about especially like long term <laughs> right <laughs> thank you rich and long term with this volatility it's really like it's tough man if you see like the volatility you guys like when you do like scalping and like very like short-term trades on the long term is like exponential way volatile and harder to like you know keep a position open for so long even if you pull like just a little bit but still like it really can move within like a couple of weeks a month with a range of plus minus 20 percent and it, it change your like portfolio it change your mood for sure so like you know you want to try to yeah kind of cut uh, any loss that you can and then like position yourself on you know on a way that you really like will feel more comfortable on a longer way on a longer time to like leave her leave her alone right and i think positioning in nowadays is like really like hard especially like i said like in the in long-term trades because like i said like day by day week by week like you can really like have market inversion of like 50 percent, and it's it's crazy you say what <laughs> no i i did all the analysis you know i've been like you know very specific you know all the indicators were like on you know on my side no trump or uh mr mr um, x mr. Like, you know x. yeah mr x just like drop a, uh, a tweet and say b b b b blah 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 and you know but it moves markets yeah. yeah like poof everything goes away so you need to be careful i, I really like, like positioning it's way you know it's it's very important nowadays because of the extra volatility i couldn't agree more couldn't agree more dave have you been able to catch any of the positions that you've been interested in man or are you uh, seeing the same kind uh, of volatility I'm seeing? on tesla right yeah. now um it's not working out um uh, currently uh it's not working out currently we're sitting at uh unchanged uh on uh, and i'm looking i'm looking here i'm hoping to uh uh, but yeah, it looks like, uh, nope, no, no dice there. Uh, we are selling off aggressively. And so it is time to, uh, cut the position and live to trade another day. Tried to support yesterday's close. If we, if we kind of see a little bit of consolidation in and around these levels, uh, tried to, uh, tried to support basically kind of breaking through back the 170, uh, 172 area and see if we couldn't retrace higher but we are selling off aggressively off of here and we're be and we're below yesterday's close and so once once you kind of start breaking through that if we get a close below this then then uh not necessarily my 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 most favorable setup um you know i was looking at this off 15 minute chart and we were looking pretty bullish um if if we start to regain this close and hold above the close then you know i will look to get back into this but right now no dice are we Amen. um do we talk about the smp 500 are we like you know uh, returning a little bit i i i will say at least and to five thousand. i we might i don't i don't know man this, this it's been so resilient no the i know i know i, I so feel you but resilient. i don't know like we, we kind of talked through that a little bit and i was just looking at that and saying like if uh you know we we're just gonna you know we got that information yesterday right and then we're rallying off of that today a little bit um we got a lot to yesterday's range so in you know for today on an intraday basis i could see the reasons for a rally um but in terms of the the idea that we're going to um you know rally off this number i don't like my, my inclination is that we don't rally until we start seeing rate cuts um but then where, where's the retracement level where's the support level that we try to hold we you know we look at eighteen thousand on the nasdaq as like the current alamo right on the s p um you know uh 
I, I don't I don't quite follow it as well, but that five thousand seems like a like a psychological level. Um, but the, the no, way I mean, like, do you think it's gonna happen like from now to to five thousand, or we'll still have some new highs? I think that we, I, I think we make uh, I don't think we make a new high until yeah. one of two things happens. Either a we get a new rate cut, we get a rate cut, or b uh, earnings just the, the uh, company earnings over the next couple quarters really just just blow Take people. Off. Yeah, those are like that. That's what, kind of what needs. Well, we're expecting now like who's gonna be might be affecting mostly. Uh, we have all the, the like Apple. Well, and see, that's kind of the point, right? Apple's been weak, right? You got companies like Meta and Google that have held up a little bit better. Amazon holding up a little bit better. Tesla, again, weak relatively, right? Uh, you know, in, in a, in a re, you know, we've talked about that downward channel that you've kind of depicted, right? Even if it retraces right into the, that $200 level, well, it's still, you know, it's still in a downward channel. It could easily turn back down. Yeah. And, create a new low on, on a longer time frame. So there's a lot of uh a lot of I mean, um, my question is like who will be the most you know probable like who has like the higher chance that can like kind of drive back to five thousand the SP five hundred which is like it's a big thing. That's why you know I was I think, I think if the chips if the chips give it up right if, if but who in particular, like Apple, I, I would say Apple, Tesla. I would, I would venture. Honestly, I'm, 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 I'm gonna say. Well, like the the, 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 like the highest odds. Like, I, I think the chips group. Yeah. That if they, that's what'll take it down because Apple's been weak and the market's still holding up. True. Yeah. Right. Even, even right. though, even though it's the, it's the, you know, as far as weighted, I think if Microsoft gives it up, that's another one that you could say because Microsoft's done really, really well especially relative to Apple, like you take a Microsoft, right? Um, and say, oh, like, uh, I think at that point, you're you're looking at it and saying, all right, yeah, uh, this could be because Microsoft on the year is is positive or Apple is not. So I, mm -hmm. I think that the, the it, you, you have to look at what brought us here, right? And what brought us here were the chip names was anything that had an AI play, including Microsoft, which had its own AI catalysts that were associated with it. Um, if the if that if that gives it up, then and the laggards right don't trade up because there's no positive catalyst for it. That's that's what'll bring the index down. Um, but as long as people feel like there's some positivity in there um, and we're not kind of giving it up, I don't I don't think uh, I, I me personally I don't think that you know, I think we remain consolidative until we get more definitive news off the things that got us here. Even because we are talking from now level, we're talking about like at three, four, three and a half percent. So it's not like, you know, such a. Uh, it's not. We can do that in a couple of weeks. Yeah. You know, it, it, when you ebb and flow. Right. Uh, you know, what is the S&P move on on average in a, in a given day? Right. Yeah. Somewhere yesterday, like it lost like a one percent. So like with like three days it's, it's, it's gonna go to five thousand like easily it, it it could do that but you know what we what did we get yesterday we got a really strong catalyst that drove to that one percent right are we gonna get strong catalysts that move the market yeah but that's the thing there? like if you see the last week in general like three candles were in order of one percent so it means like yeah volatility is coming back and we might have like you know a, a fewer days to go to five thousand. That's I what I mean. It's the easier path. I believe it's the easier path than it, than than the upside, for sure. Yeah, uh, I think it's. <laughs> I, I well, think we that, see, yeah, if it's gonna be like yeah, if it's just gonna be like a path to new highs, or you know what we always said since the beginning. There's going to be election. There's going to be a uh, uh, focus on the interest rate. Um, and, you know, all this pressure, it's, it's a big thing. Like 2024 is going to be very, you know, whoever's going to be in charge, government, United States, Fed, whatever. It's my, even like what we say, like the, the chips uh, CEOs, considering this actual uh, yeah, economic situation, Man, it's yeah. tough. Like it's gonna be a hard time for everybody, man. 
Yeah, I yeah, and we've talked about uh, in terms of the uh, the small and mid caps. That's you know that hasn't really uh, truly rallied with with what what got us here, right? And we talked about the narrow breadth of the rally, which was like the leaders were were leading really really hard and lifted us to this point, right? But a lot of the other companies haven't necessarily performed so well on the year. So the index is up, but it's up because it's of the very narrow breadth of the, you know, of the rally. Um, and I think that uh, in terms of NASDAQ versus S&P, NASDAQ's up more because it's weighted in the tech, whereas the S&P, uh, it, it's a bit more broad in terms of that. But you look at the Dow as well, and, you know, you know I don't it hasn't been necessarily as sexy as the things that we talk about every day. Um, right. It's delicious. It's yeah. delicious. It hasn't been trade delicious, right? <laughs> That's for sure. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, we got a couple interesting questions here. Um, so, uh, uh, so let's see, uh, let's take this one, this one here from Paul first. Uh, how do you think the upcoming news hey. events out of the U S do to markets as a whole? Um, you know, uh, Marcelo, your your thoughts as far as news catalysts and and the markets. Uh, we kind of got your insight in terms of like, you know, I think you're feeling a little bit more like we're going to see five thousand first uh, than we will new highs. I I for my perspective, yeah, we might. We'll I will give her at seventy five percent, seventy. That's pretty strong right there. Look at look at that strong. You know, again, but even if we retrace the five thousand. We talk about the long term. Yeah, that's the thing. Like it's it seems like a safe area, even for you know whoever wants to like see new highs, because it's it's in nu numerically it's a psychological level. We need a, like a little break from you know this rally. So you know it's it, it's not seventy percent is not even like so so strong. I would say because I would still like you know. Mm, Maybe it's going to go back to like it's going to be it's going to do like a, a, a double high and then going back. Right. But I don't know if it's going to be from now, like new, like straight highs, like 54, let's say. Right. A fifth over 100. It's, it's, uh, it I, certainly I, doesn't feel like it. No. It, it, I mean, the, you know, it, it doesn't it, it definitely does not feel like it again. You know, that's like even that, like we're, we're still thinking. Uh, S&P 500 means like, yeah, blue chips, right? Like all, the all American. So we got to see F what we're going to, what's going to happen yeah, with the, uh, the quarter uh, reports. Yep. And that's the thing, like if what we have assisted, what we have like, you know, in, um, saw like in the, you know, last year was like a strong economy. But I think now, yeah, the economy maybe will this attend just a little slide that's the thing like people will just find like even a slight thing that is not gonna be perfect and you know to kind of uh give you that you know the green the total green line to new highs and then there's gonna be something a little bit that you know it's gonna put in your mind mm, i don't know i don't trust this i i see a lot of negativities and then you know that will you know create the uh, butterfly effect and everybody might see the 5,000 sooner. That's the thing. It, it, it And nowadays, there, I think there is like a very, you know, like I said, volatility. I wouldn't say even negativity, but very like, you know, you stay there and you watch. And if one number, it's like 0.1% that, you know, lower than expected, that's going to be the trigger and say, okay, yeah. That's you see the economy is not strong as it was, and it's gonna be a BS because you know it's it's gonna be just a slight number under the expected, but that's gonna be give them the reason to go and sell. Right. But the, the 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 reason will be just like, hey man, we have run like from so far, forty two so to five to fifty two, man. That's the reason you wanna enjoy your money. It's summertime, yeah. Close your position. Come to Italy. Spend your money because the the euro <laughs> dollar cross is going to even be on your side. That's the reason, right? It all comes back to just COVID, going back to Italy and spending money in Italy. Okay, wait, I, no, I get ten day, guys. Right. I'll show you my house from there. Do you have? A, you still have a house in Italy? Oh, I have a sea view house, man. 
No kidding. In Milan, especially now, you can In walk Milan, to the or? beach or like, like it's gonna be a few steps, and you have the that's, beach. That's crazy. Right there, Sardinia, guys. Look up for Sardinia. Sardinia. Porto Torres. Sardinia. Of course, we know Sardinia. All of all of our wives, they they, they know what honeymoons look like on HGTV. Right. We, we're familiar with the island. Marcella. Oh, actually, did I tell you I was on 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 one of the show on HGTV? You were on a show on HGTV. Yeah, didn't tell you that. Yeah. Stop it. It's famous. Yeah. Look Stop up it. Mediterranean <laughs> Life season two. No place <laughs> like Sardinia. I'm I'm serious. I'm that serious. I I'm serious. I I have a profile on IMDb. <laughs> oh, oh my guys. gosh. Oh my I thought I mentioned it before. My maybe I, season two of what show? Oh, hold up, I'm I, writing it down. Maybe season just, two of what? Just write it down. No place like Sardinia, and no it's gonna pop up on Google. Like Sardinia. How, how, I, I don't the even... HGTV um, series. It's called Mediterranean Life. Marcelo is oh famous. God. This I'm underlining that in my notes. What? What? <laughs> is, that's so random. Marcelo's on oh, HGTV. Oh man! <laughs> uh, my wife is gonna lose it, man. That that is yeah. Really... Like, like we are super famous. Like oh, we we do every Thursday with a flipping movie star. Okay. Yep. Yep. I, like, what did you do today? Oh, you you, you weren't hanging out with Marcelo. Have you seen that? Uh, right. <laughs> I am. You should have that in your bio. As seen on HGTV. Oh my god! Really oh, just I, think, I, think I, I think I meant. I think I mentioned it on LinkedIn. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. Oh my. Oh, goodness. that's great. I mentioned it on LinkedIn. <laughs> oh, that's so perfect. Yeah, I have a link on, on, on link. Did you guys look look up on, 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 on myself on Google? Oh, don't worry. No, don't no, worry. no, no. I haven't I haven't, I, I haven't yeah. I'm still I'm still Just looking put, at put the it, chart. Put it on, on the comments, right? You gotta put it there so that everybody can see it. Oh my goodness, that's no, hilarious. That's no, I'm looking, I'm looking at uh Apple showing some strength off the open has kind of uh kind of caught a bid. Uh Got up to that first resistance point in and around that 169.20. Retraced just a little bit, right? Kind of tagged it, uh, reversed off of that, but strong uptrend. Uh, this light blue line is VWAP on my chart. So above VWAP, above, uh, I have the 9 EMA, um, uh, and, and, and I'm looking here, and it's just like very, very bullish action on Apple so far. But again, the better level, in my opinion, in terms of if you think uh, you want to play a little bit of mean reversion or a level of interest is going to be off this 830 number that we got yesterday. Um, but so far, you know, uh, Apple kind of on its march, uh, holding up near the highs. Uh, we'll see what this uh, what this does. Usually what happens when I talk about a stock and I say, hey, Apple's looking bullish, it tanks. And then if it's like, hey, this is bearish, it, it, it rips. Um, but that's the risk that you take in uh, in talking about these things. But, you know, you can't you can't argue with, uh, you know, four or five minute closes in the green into into a level. Right. Uh, bro, you know, we trying to hold up above these pre-market highs. Um, but again, I don't want to do anything with this really until it gets up to the one, uh, 170 level. Uh, Tesla, uh, it was holding up a little bit. Uh, in these pre-market lows, looks like it's uh, given up the ghost a little bit. Uh, you know, I tried that. I tried that long off of yesterday's close. It's you know, to me, especially if the pre-market action and in uh, is uh, very uh, very bullish, uh, I like the idea of of that long. Uh, it just did not work out off that level, and we've sold off uh, precipitously off that level and. We could go back and look at, okay, so we we tagged the 174.17 high, which we had talked about in the pre-market. That was in and around that price that was previous resistance. So we went we went right through resistance, right? Um, I wasn't looking for a breakout trade. I really wanted it, uh, wanted it to dip. I got my dip. It just didn't hold up here. And then off we go. And I was kind of basically giving it a little bit of room below this 170, 170 level. Give it, gave it a little bit of room, saw that it really wasn't uh, rallying off that price, uh, and we, we've sold off another $2 from there. So, um, you know, in terms of, of a trade, I don't like losing on trades, but at the same time, this was this was the trade that I that I was one of the setups I was looking to to take. 
It did not work out. I did not stay in the trade. I didn't add anything into it. Uh, it just, uh, you know, and you look at the, uh, you look at it uh, now and it is uh, uh, giving it up uh, again uh, on the day. Uh, where could we turn around? We could be, you know, going down to this 167 level. Uh, we did wick down here uh, in the pre-market a few days ago and that's as low as 164. And then we talked about that 160 level off that Reuters uh, news um, in terms of where, where where it could head over the next couple of days. I want to instead wow, like to uh, focus on like Bitcoin. We haven't talked about it in a bit. Kind of miss Boris, my friend. Aww. I'll try to like shut him out and, you know, talk about Bitcoin a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Well, what do you, what do you, have do you, you know, he was in Dubai, right? I know. He's going to be next Dubai, week. Yeah. Or no, oh, he's going to Dubai. No, he was in Miami. Miami. This guy's this guy's globe he He's living the life, bro. He's gonna, just gonna like crypto conference all over the world. Say, bro, you're living my. I wanted to do that. I'm just like on a computer now all day. Instead, you're in Texas. I'm yeah. Texas, but I got benefits, so I kind of you know I can even go to Dubai if I want. Anyway, I'll see that we might have new highs on Bitcoin. Insane. Which I don't know if how it's gonna because you know Bitcoin it's like it's Boris specialty with the halving, but like this pattern here and this one here, I don't know. This sounds to me going to 80, 85 at least. And probably the halving is gonna help out. I don't know. I, I don't know if you guys know more about like uh, when it's gonna be we and did, how it's gonna work. Yeah. So we uh, we did talk about that uh, pretty extensively because I was trying to understand what it what it was, and my my thought was, yes, uh, it will help the price of Bitcoin. Actual might hurt the miners because they have to work twice as hard to mine the same amount of Bitcoin. So the miners is gonna affect the the crude oil. Yeah, yeah, which right. is which because is they're, using, say, they're but... using the energy from, yeah. and they're know. like one of the most, like, now, like, you know, um, energy user in the world, bro. Uh, well, uh, do uh, in coal, maybe the farms, yeah. power plant. Well, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Gonna be yeah. well, we four see times it more, bro, right. We see it more pronounced in, in oil. Um, the price of coal is, is, is affected slightly, but not nearly as much as as oil is i mean it's it's absolutely it's another one of those insane things where you know you, you just you wouldn't expect the correlation to exist and quite as strong a strength as it does but it's definitely present and if you pay attention to it closely it's i've seen people actually build strategies around it that was in you know that was in 2020 when things were crazy volatile but um I've, I've seen people put together strategies based on the performance of miners and how much energy they were pulling I'm not sure if those strategies still work today, but you know, we're, from an oil perspective, there's a lot of money, a lot of money on the line um, yeah. when we're looking at Bitcoin production being cut in half. Who was it like? And, and when we last time we went with Boris to consensus here in Austin, uh, one of them I don't remember who was it. They uh, actually use like renewable energy. Um, oh, that's an angle. Yeah, there was an angle, but I don't remember who was. It's kind of famous, and don't remember which one was it. And yeah, like we even interviewed them because we had like our own like kind of video show. Of course, I was uh, on the show as well. <laughs> on the videos, right? <laughs> right. Going right, around right. people and asking questions with my Italian accent, trying to be funny, and, but probably they didn't catch my all my jokes because <laughs> for them they didn't make sense. <laughs> This guy. I need you to find that video. I, I want to see it. I'm curious. Well, if you go on cons uh, if you go on Coin W Consensus uh, 2023 on YouTube, probably yeah, you will see me like interviewing people okay. randomly. So I'm, okay. I'm, I'm I'm on YouTube in a few things. <laughs> this guy is flipping famous, man. Yeah, man. He's yeah, so he used was. to the camera. So used to the camera. Very comfortable in front of the pictures and the paparazzi. It's crazy. But the thing is, like, I should be, a, you know, more comfortable in front of a chart. That's harder. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Amen. There, there, amen. Amen, amen to that. Yeah. So yeah. I would say 85. I don't know about 100 all the way, but it could be. But 
I would say at least 85 from this perspective, even because they are quite high. And even there from the S&P 500, the, as, a, as the S&P 500, you know, the divergence is going to be even bigger and bigger. So I don't know if 100 is going to be touched and then there's going to be huge. And definitely like you want to, for 100, I, I will open a short probably. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, he ended up in Texas, right? Yeah, right. Michael would ask, "What happened? How did you end up in Texas?" And Barry beautifully put, "You know, you went to a Trump rally, loved it, and never left." Is that is that you know how you before found the beautiful Texas? That's the thing. Like after after Biden has been elected, you know, I was be able to immigrate here. <laughs> I couldn't do it before. So and oh, I chose horrible. Texas because yeah, like it's from my perspective, probably it's like the most powerful state in terms of like weapons, probably. Probably <laughs> weapons. I think. I mean, Texas on its own uh, is a top ten world economy. Yes, uh, I think it is. I think it's not. Exactly. If it was just a state, it's like the, the second. Yeah, it's the second richest or the first uh, richest like uh, state. Yeah, in the United States for sure, and for sure in the world. Then, so yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a, it's like a top ten. The only thing that sucks alone. is the weather. But yeah. like I said, I well, like, uh, is it too hot? Is it too it's hot very for you? Humid. Yeah, it's like it's like a Florida with no wind. Okay, so are you in the uh, are you like a Houston area then? Oh no, you said you were Austin. You're in the Houston area. Okay, that's I see that. I know Tejas. I know it, like, that sounds like the Bayou Tejas. down there, boy. It's 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 humid. It's hot. I had fun in Houston, uh, but I was there for a good time, not a long time. It's it was the fourth a, biggest uh, city in, in the United States. Yeah. Quite big. You don't even yeah, you don't even know where the downtown part because it's so spread out. It's, you don't even know where you are. The planning is very weird. What when I went yeah. with my wife, yeah, I got yeah. a I got a place in quote unquote downtown, and we tried to walk. Yeah, I have yeah, half is downtown, which I never go. But then down, if you see downtown, is everything is downtown after like yeah. a certain area. Yeah. yeah, no, it was it was really weird. I, I, but I did get the chance to go down to uh, down to Galveston. Uh, got a room at the Four Seasons right off the uh, right off the coast. There, it's kind of like across the street. Who makes the uh, money, huh? Who see? makes the money? <laughs> and then uh, and then you know we 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 you know, went to Bucky's right because we flew down there. And I oh, you no never tried Bucky's before? Not before then. Oh, oh I don't did you know what Bucky's? Bucky's? Yeah. Yes, you yeah. have to know. I was in you that place for like three hours, and I got everything I needed for a day at the beach. Yeah. I got the the sunshade, some beach towels, a cooler. Uh, got the ice. Got tons of food, an umbrella. I mean, I got everything I needed. A bathing suit. I mean, I got everything I needed to go for a day on the beach. Yeah, uh, my is, daughter is and I went down to the uh, went down to the shore, and we were just uh, we were just kicking it. We were down there for about three days down down in Galveston. We spent about Did four you days. Even go to Kima, or just Galveston? Just Galveston, because Kima it's it's very nice area as well. They have all, all the pier. It's 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 cool. It's yeah. No, I, I had a blast. I I had an absolute blast. That was that was so much fun. Yeah, and it's probably way cheaper than Florida. It, it, it's, it's so much cheaper. Said, far. That's why you said uh, when you said humid. I'm like, oh man, yeah, he's in Houston. Uh, you know, um, yeah. You know, I'm a I'm a closet Texas A&M football fan. Uh, I, don't, I, I don't know why. I, I'm I, I'm not from Texas. You I like the logo? Know. I I like the band. That big old band they got uh, in there. Yeah, they have a great band. And like, I, I, I'm, I'm just a big fan, so I, you know, I would like to go down to Kyle Field and watch a game at some point. I will, I will do that for sure. Um, you know, I've got a little bit more time on my hands, but yeah, uh, you know, I, I, yeah, big, big Texas A&M fan in terms of like other teams. You know, you always have your team, then you got some backup teams. Uh, well, there are uh, backup teams. I, 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 you know, I, I don't follow an NFL or I just. Did you, you know, do you, so I do you have an MLS team down there? Uh, soccer team? Does, does Houston have an MLS team? Yes. The, what are they call? Dynamo. Uh, yeah. Say it again. Dynamo. Dynamo. Right. Okay. You know what's funny? But they're not good. So they're I, not good. I used to play soccer growing up and I was always on, uh, my club team was called the Dynamo. And okay. so that's why I, I had to. I was like, I feel and like you gotta move to Houston, bro. Mm -hmm. If you wanna get like some kind of disease, just no, I'm not. 
What? No, I don't, I don't. I don't need to do any of that. We got I, the Philadelphia Soul we went, up in the neck of the I, woods. I took my MR. daughter to the doctor yesterday, and we found out she has asthma. And the the allergy said, "Oh, Houston, you know, like the worst area where to live because it's pollution and like all the environment is not good for." It's yeah, like, it's like she, she never had anything before. Just yeah. this year, she, you know. Oh, I'm sorry to hear it, my what friend. I How old is she again? It's okay. What? How old is she again? She's six and a half. Oh wow! That's yeah, I, I've I've dealt with all that stuff before. Looking at the, uh, you know, kind of looking at the markets here, I think uh, volumes kind of tapered off in terms of of what we were seeing uh, early on this morning. We are retracing on uh, on the Nasdaq and the e the ES more pronounced uh, pullback uh, into uh, our, uh, you know, we're we're kind of retracing. Uh, Looks more like a over fifty percent on the uh, on the Nasdaq from the move at eight thirty. Oh yeah, uh, but we are pulling back on the uh, on the on the Qs as well. Um, so yeah, both 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 the ES uh, and the Nasdaq looking 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 a little soft at the moment. Um, you know, and uh, in the stocks that I'm looking at. Uh, what's holding up? You know, I talked about this earlier, right? What happens when the market goes down? You get the mean. Do we get the mean stock uh, kind of rally off of off of uh, you know the market being soft? And that's exactly what's happened, right? So we look. Well, money, at, you know, uh, comes out from one thing and has to go in somewhere else, right? Yep. And so we look at something uh, like a Reddit, and yeah, up two percent, uh, two point two four percent on the day. Uh, and you know, what kind of setup would have been in here? Well, we're looking at yesterday's close in and around that forty two dollar area. We made a low at a uh, at forty two oh one. The close was forty one ninety seven. So a nickel off the close, and we've rallied. We rallied as high as three dollars and fifty cents off of that. So that's kind of where the money went, right? We we saw money kind of leaving all these other things and going into that. Uh, what else is up here? Chips holding up, right? So uh, we look at Nvidia. Nvidia holding up uh, pretty strong, but I mean, really choppy price action again. Uh, you know what setup would have kind of could have been favorable there? I think buying yesterday's close should have been buying yesterday's close on Nvidia instead of Tesla. Um, you know, <laughs> word to the wise. Uh, let's look at uh, a stock like AMD showing a little bit more strength. Again, what setup uh, could have, uh, you know, could could one have taken there? Um, you know, honestly, again, uh, you got two chances to buy yesterday's close. And then you could you could erode this up for about, you know, $1.50, $2 up to the upside. So that's, uh, you know, so the strength is currently in the chips. Uh, we've already talked Apple. We haven't looked at Google. So let's look at Google real quick, see what we're doing on Google. Uh, in the midst of a retracement, right? But uh, again, um, you know, we didn't even get down to yesterday's close. So health strength continued to be strong. Now currently selling off, but we're wicking off the uh, opening wick uh, down here, this 156.61. That's why we wicked off the open. Uh, currently trying to rally off of that. We'll see if we do that. We are below VWAP. We are below the 9 EMA. Um, so, you know, uh, that's just something to consider in terms of you know, whether or not you, you, you want to buy a dip in something like that. But other than that, not seeing uh, much more in terms of like pronounced strength, if you will, uh, we do see some weakness. Uh, Rivian, uh, we talked about Rivian about a couple months back. We talked about, we did a Tesla versus Rivian thing. And I basically said, you know, if it holds in around that 1035 level, then, you know, you know where you're wrong. We've given that up. Uh, Dave? Dave? On, uh, yeah, you got me? Yeah. yeah. Last thing we heard is you, we've given up and then you were gone. It, it was I, they're working on my internet today. Uh, so ah, uh, that could be that could be uh that could be what happened there. Um, gotcha. Okay. But yeah, so you know, you look, you you you're looking at. I was looking at the ten dollar level on Rivian. Um, you know, in terms of whether it was going to hold up, we have really, we have really given up uh, uh, that level on uh, on Rivian. Uh, let's look. Bef I would be remiss um, before the end of the stream if we didn't talk about uh, Marcelo's favorite stock, DJT, below IPO levels. Oops, 
Uh, let me bring this back up. Let's pull this back to uh, a daily chart. Let's do a daily chart on this thing. Uh, and nice. Look at what done. That's a beautiful uh, thing. It's just, it's just now it's, you know, it, it's trying to hold on to, you know, these lows here um, from when it, when it, when it spacked from, uh, um, oh boy, what was that thing before? It was, it's DJT now, DWAC. It was right. DWAC before it became DJT. And uh, yeah, look at this. Thing. You know, we were talking about it consolidating around the $65 level. We're far below that. And we are sitting down here near the lows. Um, I, I'm sure that uh, um, uh, the big man isn't necessarily very happy about this because if he did, if he would have had his way, well, he would have got up here. You already the spent the money. You already gave the money. So it's fine now. He doesn't care. Well, he's, <laughs> he's stuck in the he's stuck in the stock for like nine months, though. Isn't, isn't that right, though, Dave? Yeah, see, uh, the, six. the stocks the stocks went up just right time where you had to pay the the, the, the fine, right? Yeah, so no, he's he's locked in though. He's in a yeah, lock in right. period. He can't do anything with the stock for 180. Yeah, days. but he can he can like have a, a loan against it. Oh man, see any man, man, that's true. You know, we had this that's conversation, true. right? And this is what upsets people about you know taxing unrealized gains. And it's like, yeah, it's uh, it is inherently unfair to tax an unrealized gain. But then we use an unrealized gain to leverage as an asset. Who, who do you think? Who do you think? Who do you think have done this laws? Who do you think? Uh, uh, what? Well, what well, exactly? Uh, but <laughs> you know, that's what happened when Elon bought Twitter, right? And then everybody yeah. was kind of raising a stink. And it's like, yeah. But the problem is, is that when we try to change the law, we don't change the law to where it says, okay, over, over a certain dollar threshold, we're trying to say, well, we need to tax everybody's unrealized gains. It's like, no, yeah. you need to tax unrealized gains that are used as an asset to, uh, to acquire or conduct a financial transaction. That's how the law yeah. should be. The problem yeah. is that we won't write it that way. Because if I hold, if I'm holding something, right, I haven't realized the gain or the loss. It's not worth anything until I pull it out. And the thing is, like they because of the high, they even get like better rates. So yep. forget that. Oh, mm -hmm. I'm sure. Oh, yeah, I know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm well, well aware of the shenanigans. Unfortunately, I'm not at those highs, so I can't get those favorable rates. I was talking to my partner. Well, if, so. if you, if you want, I can make you be like famous like me. So just you know, keep yeah. I, I mean, yeah, I need an IMDb profile for sure. <laughs> so you know, it we helps. were conversation uh you know that is relevant in terms of what we've been talking about uh you know as a consumer in this economy right and you know my partner was talking about having some ambitious goals in terms of what we wanted to do throughout the next 12 month period and i said well you know in terms of being a consumer i don't necessarily want to engage heavily in that activity because of the current interest rates or you know do we really need to siphon off that much cash in order to accomplish these things and are they worth accomplishing this year or could they be accomplished over time she really doesn't like it when i talk in terms of that but again i think of myself individually as a business and so as a business if i'm not making money i'm losing money do i really want to lose money because of x y and z she mm -hmm. doesn't like it because when i put it in that perspective she's like oh that's not worth it and i'm like then then you don't really need it or you know you you balance your mix of uh you know your your needs and your wants in terms of uh, of, of what you're actually trying to, to especially to when you don't have like a fixed income, right? Like the, yeah, like if, if count on it fixed, uh, yeah, then you're definitely you, you don't definitely want to you know put your portfolio at risk uh, to accomplish these other things, and now you're in a bigger drawdown, and then you know maybe you're trading under pressure, right? You know, yeah. and and because you, and you know you have to make the money in order to cover yeah. the inflation, the expenses, yeah. Yep. Nope. So, so that's kind of like the, uh, you know, so we, we negotiated some, but I think those are conversations that every household is having. Uh, it doesn't always reflect in the market. Right. And that's the disconnect between the market and, and main street. And there, even people that are market participants, I've heard people ranting yesterday, like that's crap. Even this number coming in like this, it should be much higher. I'm paying X, Y, Z for this, that, whatever. We talked about the, uh, uh, 300% inflation in the price of a McChicken over the past 20 years. Uh, I mean, <laughs> wow. like, but everything feels like that. That's what people see. That's what people experience. Right. 
That's um, what whereas, do, yeah. Uh, and that's what people feel where everybody, you know, for the most that's part. That's why I still don't understand how Delta yesterday, like, said that, you know, they're going to even have, like, a, you know, they, they're expecting good numbers for, like, this coming summer. Because I said, like, did you did you look at the, the price of the, I think we already talked about. It. Yeah, we thought, that's why they're expecting it. How, how can <laughs> people can afford that? How? how? They how? like debt. They love debt. They're like, you know what? I can't, the, the debt doesn't follow me into the afterlife. So. Swipe <laughs> in there. It's, it's unbelievable. Yeah, every like it's, every time I've been in the airport, every time I've been in the airport, it's been packed. Yeah, it's no, I know. yeah, yeah. I, I feel you. I, that's why because I fly standby, right? Because of the my wife benefits, I'm scared mm -hmm. that I will be able to catch a fly because they're gonna be full. Well, actually, what happened when we came back? There was seats open. There were seats open, but they didn't let us in because they prefer, obviously, like the cargo. Pain. So if yeah. they oh, were like the, the cargo come because they like it's good money for them. Yeah. They're no rev. They were and there were like fifty open seats. 50. Oh wow! They're like nope. We they just didn't let us in. Uh, not even for one. Coming back from Italy. Yes. So yeah, they had the they had the Parmesan cheese. They had the real <laughs> real tomato sauce. They had you oh, know they had. Stuff, you know, Pasta. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Italian poppers. He's like, I'm also Italian. I am an Italian product. Yeah. You I, want I have it? stuff on my own luggage. So let, <laughs> that's a cargo. <laughs> oh shoot! Uh, uh, you know, before the end of the stream, Aaron, uh, you think we should uh, we should do this? Yes. Let's do it. It's time for a heat check. Let's look at these markets. Uh, generally red from yesterday's close. We talked about the S and P. Uh, you know, you look at finance. Finance pretty much red across the board. Um, you know, very very few kernels of strength in there. Uh, tech holding up a little bit better, and we've seen that kind of in the divergence and the retracement between the Nasdaq and the uh, and the S and P. Um, you know, health technology stocks down as a group. Uh, energy, energy's down. We were really bullish on 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 this energy trade, um, and mm -hmm. uh, it, it uh, and it uh, not necessarily holding up. Now, this is just on an intraday basis. This doesn't mean that you know the expectancy is that this is going to continue to retrace. Um, but we are seeing weakness there. Uh, everybody hates Visa and Mastercard this morning. Uh, I hate them too because they keep increasing their fees, and businesses are, you know, trying to pass that on to the consumer. And I like to game the uh, credit card rewards. I use my credit card as cash, and then collect the rewards off of that. And I don't, you know, that's kind of how I use it. Um, and I don't like that they have to charge. They want to charge me more because, you know, Visa and Mastercard are getting, you know, so greedy. Uh, but yeah. Anyways, we talked about Tesla quite a bit. Tried to buy the dip in that. I failed. Actually, in terms of the trade, I executed the trade. It failed. So therefore, you know, Tesla down 1.3%. So yeah, and then health services down. So if we're looking here and we're saying, okay, all of the techie stocks that are in the NASDAQ uh, seem to be holding up higher. Yeah, a little bit more green than the NASDAQ. Uh, you know, you're seeing, again, uh, electronic technology as a sector uh, performing relatively well. Uh, the health technology sector, except for Regeneron, I don't know what's going on there, but people don't like Regeneron, but that's holding up pretty well. Um, and everything else is just kind of flat. So, you know, we're, we're, we're above unchanged, but not by much on the NASDAQ. Uh, we're much, uh, I think, are we red on the S&P? Yes. Barely. Okay. I was like, look, I'm like, wait, yeah, we are. We're red on the S&P where we're just holding up above, uh, slightly above the lows. Uh, if if not slightly at unchanged on the uh, on the Nasdaq, so uh, that was the, that was what the rally was off that eight thirty number. It's selling off off of that. We you know I was really hoping that we could get the yesterday's price action and then really pile in on the shorts, but I think the shorts are kind of coming in a little bit more aggressively. We're gonna have to do some work to get back up to uh, yesterday's opening prices. Agreed. So you Agreed. see, like now people know that I'm famous, so they're listening to us more. And we said we're gonna go to five thousand. That's why they're selling. That's what we off. said. But yeah, that's, that's, what, that's locked in. Like, that's locked in. Uh, and people, I've already bought my puts. I don't know if you guys have done the same, but <laughs> puts are puts are on sale, and um, I, I have I have it just. You know, I would say please out. I, I would say puts it away then. <laughs> there you funny. go. That's a father right there. That was a dad joke. <laughs> I've heard one. 
Yeah, you know, it's funny though, right? That I, I've looked at a strategy before and actually did it on Ford several years ago. I wanted Ford at a certain price. So mm -hmm. I would sell the puts and collect the premium. And if I got assigned the shares, they were going to come in at my strike price because I wanted to hold mm -hmm. Ford. So I wanted right. to hold Ford, right? And I wanted it at a certain price. So I was just selling the premium. I'd collect the premium. I collected it for like six months. And then I got assigned the shares. And then I'm like, perfect. That's killer. I want you. And that's that's what I wanted to do with it, uh, and it's probably like one of my best trades ever on 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 it because I was collecting premium for months for months. I have a lot of friends. They do that. They just yeah. do that. They collect it, the, the premiums and they hold the shares. Yeah, I'm like, if you're gonna assign me and shares, it seems like easy, you know, right? We said you just do that. It's you easy. just you could it seems easy you know you you can get pretty nervous if it gets down to your strike price you know and and then you're you're buying you're buying it up there but you know at the end of the day you know that was just a way to you know i couldn't i didn't want to fomo into the position i wanted it to at a certain price and so if it's something that you want at a certain price and you think it could be you're hoping that it gets back down there and that's the price you want it at then you know collect the premium uh and wait for it to get to your price get assigned the shares and then hold them and then execute your trade from there not not a not a not a terrible way to live in existence but i will say that like everything else in these markets it's risky uh you have to be you have to be comfortable with the risk that you're that that you're doing and you definitely have to uh, uh study up on it to make sure that you don't uh you have the capital to actually uh participate in that don't do that and think that you know if you don't have the money for it don't do it yeah, the risk of reward with with selling premium is is the is the big deal, right? Your chances are you're going to be right, but that that one or two times you're wrong, it's incredibly expensive. It's incredibly yeah, you expensive don't, to be trading. Like yeah, that. you don't you don't you you don't want to be doing that. D definitely don't do that on stocks that aren't necessarily uh, companies you've heard of. You want to you want to yeah. you know make sure you do that. You know, on Ford was really cheap at that. Yeah, with yeah this thing. that's why I did it on Ford because it was relative, relatively cheap, uh, cheap blue uh, blue chip stock. I'm like, okay, Ford's not going to go away tomorrow. I could be a shareholder in Ford and be a little bit com – I'll be comfortable being a shareholder in Ford. But, right. yeah. Yeah, I think that's the – that's the beauty of the stream, guys. We appreciate you guys so much for spending some time with us. Phantom, welcome back. Sad it's only two days, but you can see us in the Discord, my friend. Uh, it's always great to see you guys and participate in everything. We want to thank you so much for your time. Thank you for joining us here at Trade Delicious for the rest of the day. Please be careful out there. Always wear a stop loss. But most importantly, trade well and trade delicious. We'll see you. Bye, guys.